Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Nicolo tries to tackle a quite tough to tackle subject. Today we are going to talk about System76 and the fact that they are doing their own desktop. And I don't know where to start. So when I was first asked, I remember this, there was this interview and somebody asked me what did I think of it? And my initial direction was like, okay, but can they actually do it? Because an entire desktop with application, it seems is quite complex to achieve. And I've seen projects like take Maui as an example, there is just an handful of developers, if not just one working on so many application plus a desktop environment like uh, the shell. And yes, they are able, the Maui project, to deliver the application and the desktop. However, when you actually use them, it's clear that they are not ready to be used as your like main applications, in my personal opinion. So it's important when you have to, when you have such a complex task to be able to actually achieve it. So is that the case? Well, my personal answer to that question was it really depends on how much they want to re-implement from scratch because it's pretty easy to like take GNOME, make some modification of GNOME and then call it your own desktop environment. You could do that and it's actually quite easy and you preserve all of the functionalities of GNOME and that's kind of what PopOS was doing before this. But it seems like they want to actually ditch GNOME entirely. They do want it. So my question was like, how much do they want to re-implement? Will it be another GTK thing? Will they go with another toolkit? Will they do their own toolkit? Are they going to re-implement all of the core applications? These kind of questions, like how much are they going to rebuild? Because especially if you've followed the coverage of the news about Cosmics, sometimes it seems like they want to try slow, just port some things to this new concept. Some other times it seems like they're, they are ready to just do a whole new operating system, like not even Linux, just a new operating system. So, but we'll get to that. So let's start two months ago, and I guess we knew sooner than this, but apparently they do want to replace GTK or as much GTK as possible with Iced. So if you don't know what Iced is, it is a toolkit to, you know, make apps and a GUI in general using Rust. So it's made for Rust. And that actually came to no surprise because one of the main developers of System76, Jeremy Soller, is a big uh, Rust fan, if I understood that correctly, and even has its own operating system uh, written in Rust. I've actually talked about this before in my podcast. And yes, this was promptly confirmed by a developer of System76. It's also rather interesting, although I do not really want to get really too much into it, that this also sparked some discussion over the GNOME side with some, I think we can safely call them attacks towards this idea. This is a public chat from GNOME where you can see some skepticism towards this project, you know, and there has been like in 2021, much prior to this, a lot of discussion between System76 and GNOME folks. And it's quite a controversial matter and I really don't want to get to it, especially these particular messages, but they do kind of raise an interesting point. Okay, so you're switching from GTK to Iced, and currently Iced has no accessibility whatsoever support. So how are you going to provide that upon the first release of this comic desktop, which should be next year, actually? How are you going to achieve that? Accessibility is quite a big uh, task to tackle, and this really, again, builds into the fact that if you're redoing a lot of stuff from scratch, then, you know, a lot of effort is needed. So there is actually this comment that nicely put forwards all of the issues that you might have by switching to a toolkit that is not really like iced, if that's, you know, the claim. And there is that a nice answer by the System76 developer that addresses this kind of things and say that all of that was taken into account and many of the things that were raised were already fixed in a fork of Iced made by uh, System76 with the idea of adding this kind of features. 
so it, of course it's not like they're doing this randomly they, they do have a clear idea of what they're doing it seems we do also get some nice q a regarding the new features of this system as an example we do have gpu acceleration but, um, via opengl and also it says it transcircles around jtk so it seems like performance could be improved by switching to iced and also something that makes me happy on the inside is that there should be support for transparency blur and gloss if you know the work that I do in Kitty Plasma, I just love transparency blur and gloss. Like I've actually spent like months trying to get the right amount of the contrast effect to use blur so that it's transparent and pretty. I've actually made Kitty Plasma much more transparent by default. So, you know, I, it's, it's just a detail, but I'm kind of biased. And now we get back to January for some reason, and there has been this very nice blog post that explores some of the things that are going on for the new Rust-based, at this point we know that, desktop environment. So what do we have here? It seems like at this earlier stage, it wasn't so clear whether System76 would change GTK to try to use Iced for uh, its toolkit. So there has been work to do some uh, example applications in GTK4 that were supposed to be used in this cosmic desktop. You can see as an example, this new system settings compared to the old one on the right. Now, the article does goes on with some interesting stuff, some comparison about what has changed, like there's no visible distinction between the window title bar and the body of the window. That's true, but I mean, only interesting up to a certain point, considering that we're switching to Iced anyway, apparently. They were also working back then on stuff like a launcher, which again was done using JTK. Maybe that will be rewritten in Iced and so on. The app library, the doc, the panel, you can get kind of an idea of what the design was meant to be, which is not too different from what you had previously with Pop OS. I think the idea was really not to change too much, too much, sorry, for the user experience. And for me, another question that goes here is how much of this new desktop environment upon release will we expect to have uh, uh, to be using Iced? Because uh, do they want to redo everything in Iced for the very first release? Because that seems like quite a complex task maybe they're absolutely able to I, I just don't know so let's just say that i really wouldn't be surprised if the very first release of this cosmic desktop had some parts in iced and some other parts in jtk or if it included i think that's gonna be obvious jtk op applications out of the box I, I really think that's gonna be obvious we do also get here some hints about when this desktop should come out, which is 2023, probably late 2023. And it will be called Epoch One, which is nice, I guess, and will likely have an alpha release this summer. Now, as far as I know, that didn't happen, but it makes sense if you consider that, again, they apparently made some significant changes in how they wanted to address things by switching from GTK to Iced. So, even this initial release date 2023 might change significantly and maybe even switch to 2024 because there's so much more work to do and we'll actually get to what this kind of work is. So now is finally the time after 10 minutes of video, sorry about that, that we finally arrive to the news of these days, which is System76 has decided to start giving us regular updates on the development of Cosmic uh, Desktop. And we get the first one. So it talks about two major components, the compositor and the text rendering. So about the compositor, this says that the compositor is the part that's responsible for making sure application window reacts on screen to the action you perform within it. Now, I'll be fully honest, I'm slightly confused at this point at what a compositor is because it seems to mean different things depending on whether you're on X11 or Wayland. It seems like a Wayland compositor is like the window manager. I'm really not sure. And if any of you has the answer, please explain it to me in the comments and I will make sure to pin the comment. But considering that in the comment, in the blog post, sorry, they mentioned that core functionalities such as tiling has to be implemented in the compositor 
and workspace behavior makes me think that this really is similar in task to a window manager. So what are they promising with this compositor, which is again, the whole point of the video. They're promising a lot of things like support for fractional scaling, which is really interesting. I've actually talked a lot about fractional scaling and what it means in a previous video of mine. So if you want to refresh your idea on what would it mean to have fractional scaling inside of a compositor, then you can go watch that one, but also support for, for high DPI and HDR. Again, three really big promises, considering that they are doing everything from scratch, it seems. Finally, they also want to spend time, they say, to ensure a smooth experience on NVIDIA, which will sure be very highly appreciated. Again, this is particularly impressive, considering that, again, they're doing everything from scratch. So the more I read this blog post, the more I think, okay, I'm more and more worried about the release date. It seems hard to think that they would be able to do all of that and implement new applications through Iced and a new desktop through Iced in just a year. So maybe not 2023, I don't know. It seems so unlikely to me, but maybe they pull it off. But if they do pull it off, what's going to be missing, you know, accessibility? I don't know. Secondly, we also have a lot of things talking about the text rendering, which is actually pretty difficult. You have to correctly render text in any size, resolution, orientator, or orientation, font, typeface, language, and do it. There's even talk with apps, upstream ISRS on their dis Discord server on how to do with this, how to deal with this. Finally, regarding the application and desktop and how to build them, there's work going on on libcosmic, which you can see as an alternative to libadwaita for JDK or in the context of KDE, either Plasma components or Kurigami, depends. That is, it's a widget library. It will have all of the things that should be used across the desktop and applications and applets. The idea is to allow allow um, application to be switched from GDK4 to Iced, making it compatible with Will and Shell and use its capabilities like fractional scaling, I guess, because GDK4, let's remember it, does not support fractional scaling. All of the main desktop components, so the applet, launcher, app library, all of this kind of stuff are all in Iced, with more stuff switching to Iced soon, it seems. Now, if you're more interested on the design side of things instead of the libraries and stuff, there has been a bit of time ago, this Figma that was, that got publicly released and you can kind of see what the idea is with the design using this. We have this design mockup of the application, which is the same one that you saw previously. And then we also have widgets and how they should look like, which is roughly what you had previously. Again, it seems like the idea of the design is not to change that much compared to what we previously had in Pop! OS, but nonetheless, some stuff are particularly interesting, like this notification manager is real pretty. Now, last couple of things before we go, because I really want to uh, give an overview of everything that has been said uh, publicly about what this new desktop should be so that everybody can walk out of this video knowing the stuff is a couple of tweets by this lead developer, Jeremy Soller, because, you know, he talks about the development of Heist and uh, also what seems to be his personal project, Re Redox OS, which again is written in Rust. Firstly, we have a nice comparison that was recent recently tweet, um, tweeted, tweet, tweet, I don't know, that shows a comparison between the old and the new text rendering. I think that with the compression of Twitter, the change is not that noticeable, but nonetheless, you can give it a look. And most interestingly is that it seems like he's trying to run a cosmic application and maybe also the desktop in the future using his Redox OS, which would mean that there is this operating system called Redox OS, which is written in Rust that runs a desktop and application that are written in Rust. So it's a bit like Rust paradise. Like if you like Rust, there might be an entire operating system with desktop and application coming, coming, coming. I can do this all in Rust. So pretty interesting. And I mean, what, what else? I don't have much to say myself. 
it's an interesting project. Uh, there's surely rightful doubts on doubts and uh, uncertainties on how much they will be able to deliver and when, since this is such a big project. But if they are able to do it, then wow, <laughs> what else? Let's keep following this project and see where it goes.